Hey guys, Captain CA here from Flats Class YouTube. And today's lesson, well, I'm going to share with you a little secret about fishing slow tide days. What's a slow tide day? That's when you have very little tidal movement. I mean, so little that it hardly makes it worth the effort to go fishing. That's right, we've all been faced with those. And if you're a weekend warrior and these days happen to land on your weekend when you're fishing, well, it's important to understand how you get around that and still catch fish. The way that I do it, well, let me go draw that on a little piece of paper or maybe my, my whiteboard and give you an idea of how you can beat this. And while I'm doing that, go check out some of this live footage from today's fishing. Flats Class YouTube is brought to you by Aquatraction, your go-to solution for advanced marine flooring. There we go, we got something with some weight. <laughs> Again, and work in these tight, narrow spots. Oh yeah, nicer red. Much nicer red fish. Oh, come on, buddy. <laughs> this is actually one of my trout fishing outfits, and this is you know, gonna be a nice red fish here. <laughs> down here and take this guy off again you know so you guys see what I'm doing I am fishing this little narrow gap here it goes all the way around it's almost like it acts like a creek and the fish I've got the wind coming into me here if you will I've got the wind coming this way tides falling this way what little tide there is this is on the fish activity you know level it's probably one of the poorest days of the month to be fishing um, so I go when I can go just like all of you guys do on the weekends so I'm just trying to get a bite and the best way to do it is how I'm doing it right now I'm gonna get this guy rotated oh he bit a jerk shad that's a solid 24 inch trout I'm um, trout redfish nice fish so beautiful We'll put him back in the, in the drink here. Whoa, off he goes. But again, when you're looking for action on days where there's not much tidal flow, this is what you're looking for. You're looking for something that's going to give you a narrowing of, of the water flow. It will speed the current up, and on days when it's just not going to happen, don't fish a flat. Fish a place like this, still get a bite. Next. All right, I love having uh, real-time footage like that where it can help tell the story, well, of this lesson. So here's the scenario prior to. I wanted to go out and shoot a little bit of YouTube today and uh, I'm actually looking ahead two or three days to a tournament that I'm gonna be doing with my wife here in Crystal River. So I wanted to locate some speckled trout and some redfish. So I go out there and I'm looking at my Tide app and the Tide app says that I'm maybe an hour and a half before the high and then it's going to round off. It's not going to be a sharp up and down. It rounds off and then it just leaks out the rest of the day at about, I don't know, 
falls eight inches over seven hours. That's what an inch an hour. That's imperceptible. When you have situations like that, it's very challenging to catch fish. It just is. So there's two things that I do. Um, one, as you saw, that fish was caught on a jerk shad. So using the erratic mo movement of something like a darters or a jerk shad, something that creates a reaction, that's number one. Because you're gonna have to appeal to that, uh, that fish's predator ways of vulnerability. So he's, he's gonna look for a bait that looks like it's sick and he could still take it out. But, uh, but unless you're dead on the money and have one in front of you, that's very tough. So here's the thing that works for me all the time. If you're on a flat per se, and there's hardly any water going one way or the other. I mean, you're not seeing the grass lean right or lean left, or you see a stingray mud and it just kind of billows and just hovers there. You don't see it drifting one way or the other. It means there's no movement. And that makes it challenging to catch fish. So I, I made this little, you know, artwork up here for you. Uh, these little things depict the grass flat. Now this is a big grass flat, okay? This is the mainland and this is a key, okay? And this is going to be the wind direction and the tide direction. What you're trying to do is you're trying to line them up in the same direction. That's how you get um, some velocity up. So here's what I like to do. I pick a cut typically between the mainland and a key or between two keys. And I try to make it so that whichever way the tide is moving and the wind in the same direction, I try to fish this zone. If you fish this zone in here, this little cut right here, when that tide is rolling through here, as slow as it may be, if it's got 10 to 15 miles an hour of wind behind it, well, it will create kind of an artificial tide. And then if there's some shallow humps in there and then some deeper stuff, it will make the water speed up and slow down within that same cut. In this case, those were potholes. So instead of taking my time and spending it out here on this giant flat where the water, the sheet of water is barely moving, there's no horizontal current. I spent my time in this cut and was able to catch a couple of trout and a nice, redfish as you saw. All right, if you like what you're learning here on Flats Class YouTube, if it's a benefit to you, if you're if you're really taking some of this stuff out on the water and catching fish, give us a thumbs up. Hit the notification bell so that you know when our videos come up, you'll be notified and tell your friends and tell them to subscribe. We want to make you a better angler. That's it. Captain C.A. Richardson signing off from Flats Class YouTube. See you on the next one.